good day everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, so a lot of us are thinking these days about hard platens on typewriters. You know, a lot of these machines are over half a century old. This machine, a 1971, I think it is, Royal Mercury. The quality of the machine is really like as if it was just out of the factory a week ago, except the platen is really hard. Um, so one of the things you can do, obviously, is remove the platen from your machine and send it off to a place like JJ Short and have it professionally recovered in fresh rubber. But uh, for some of us uh, out there or here, you might not want to uh, incur the expense of doing that. And also, some of these machines, it's a little bit more difficult to get the platen out of than others. And some of us may not have either the ability to do so or may not want to go to the trouble of doing so. so um, one of the alternatives people have been using is to use a backing material, a backing sheet of paper typically behind their, their typing paper to kind of pad the paper and give it the effect as if it had a healthy, uh, soft, resilient platen. And a number of those of us out in the typosphere have tried different materials. I know my friend John Monroe has been trying different kinds of plastic sheets that he finds over in Japan in the market over there. So I've experimented a little bit with backing material like sheets of polyethylene plastic film like the the four mil thick uh, 0.04 inch thick plastic film that you might find in hardware stores those have kind of worked okay but they haven't been really exceptionally well so recently I was thinking you know what we need is a really thin sheet of rubber and I, so I went on Amazon and I found a roll of Buna synthetic rubber that's one sixty fourth of an inch thick and I just received this the other day. I have not even unrolled it yet. So this uh, roll is supposedly, haven't measured it yet, but it's supposedly 12 inches uh, wide by 36 inches long, basically one foot by three feet. And I was thinking um, I could cut nine inch wide sections. I could cut, make four of these, nine inches by 12 inches, and these would be about the perfect size for backing sheets of paper for letter size typing paper. And then I thought, well, what machine would it be really good to try and see if it works? And that would be, of course, the Royal Mercury. It has a it's an ultra portable or closer to an ultra portable typewriter. The platen is not quite as big in diameter as a bigger typewriter. And of course, it's a really hard platen. So all of those means that if I can get it to work successfully on the Royal Mercury, that would be a really good sign. So let's go cut out a sheet of this and see how it works. Stay tuned. Let's see if we can unroll this. I should have probably thought about unrolling it last night in case it has a bad curl having been rolled up into a little bundle. So the next trick will be getting the tape off. Okay, so um, I noticed the lip of it right here. There's kind of like a lip that feels thicker than the rest. So let's see if I can't slice that off. don't know how easy it cuts, but it's thin enough supposedly that it should cut pretty easy and it looks like it does. The next thing is I want to do a 9. 9 times 4 is 36 so let's do 9 inches. Well that was fairly painless. I think the first thing we should do is do a test typing without the backing sheet and so I'm using this fairly thin letter quality paper, writing paper. Um, I have lately been using 32 pound laser paper which the theory being that it'll help be its own backing sheet but for this experiment I really want to see how it works on thinner paper and make a definite dramatic comparison. Okay today is the 14th of February 2021 and let's do a just a list of all the characters. Let's unthread this and let's see if I can put the backing sheet in here. Okay, I'm going to try to line the top of the paper up with the top of the sheet and I don't really know how this is going to even thread in here, how well it'll thread in here is what I mean to say. 
So this might be part of the uh, the whole system. It, whether it's good or bad might deter might be determined just as much by how easy it is to thread in as well as how well it performs. But it looks like it's gripping nicely. It doesn't bind or bunch up. You know, if you get it too tight in the platen on these smaller typewriters. Ooh, it's darker. Okay, it is quieter, um, but on the other hand, it looks like some of the letters do tend to imprint, like the letters with loops tend to have a little bit of ink in the, the loops, almost like it's too soft. It is certainly quieter, and it's certainly a darker imprint. And here you might be able to see that a lot of the letters have smudges in them in the loops. You know what? The capitals look pretty darn good, actually. Okay, so these last three lines here, uh, a line of capital O's, and then uh, the whole uppercase character set, and then the whole lowercase character set, where I see... Uh, you can start to see a lot of the lowercase letters do get filled in with some shading. So maybe my paper is just too thin and I need to go with a little bit thicker or stiffer paper. Let's try that. And it seems like with the Royal Mercury this does feed pretty well. The uh, 64th of an inch thick rubber. Looks like there's still some shading happening, but it's not as bad. Okay, so the next obvious thing to try would be the 32-pound uh, laser paper itself. Let's see here. This is 32-pound laser paper. And again, if I use a lighter touch, it's generally pretty acceptable. There's just a, a minor amount of shading in some of these uh, letters, but it's probably acceptable, and it certainly makes it quieter. Well, so I think I'm going to try the same test, uh, two different heavinesses of paper with the rubber sheet with Royal Quiet Deluxe and see if there's any different results. A single sheet of thin paper, the same sheet that we used Initially on the Royal Mercury, two Royals, two different manufacturers actually. The Royal Mercury being made by Silver Seiko in Japan. Looks like my little feed is a little crooked, but we'll just ignore that. Okay, so <clears throat> here we go. Nice and quiet. The imprint is certainly nicer, I would say cleaner, than on the Royal Mercury, although some of the letters, let's just go ahead and do the whole character set in lowercase. See what we see here. That looks okay. There is a little bit of smearing inside some of these small characters. I can see a little bit of shading, but I don't know. It's not too bad. Well, let's try it with a second sheet of paper behind it, and then we'll try it with the thicker paper. Okay, <clears throat> a second sheet of thin paper. You know what? It actually looks pretty darn good. I think it's a pretty decent imprint. On lowercase elite typeface, that's not bad. Okay, now this is going to be the 32-pound paper. A single sheet of it, of course. It is a little bit awkward getting this rubber sheet behind here because it's so flexible compared to the paper. All right, here we go. It's nice. It types pretty good. The sound of the typing is certainly quieter and it's a good imprint. Uh, I'm pretty impressed, actually. Okay, let's see here. So I was using a piece of this polyethylene plastic as a backing sheet at one time with moderate success. 
Okay, well, so now what I've done is I have trimmed a quarter inch off the width of this rubber sheet in the hopes that it will be narrow enough to feed through the typewriter now. Let's see if I can do this. We will see. Will it feed? Yes. Okay, it feeds through there successfully. Let's see if we can straighten it up. Okay. Well, other than my typos from not being used to an Azerty keyboard, it's really not that bad, actually. The imprint is noticeably better than it was before the last time I tried it. So, yeah, let's uh, try a lowercase character test. Well, that's actually pretty decent. Well, I do see some benefit to this. It does make a better imprint, and this is a really thin paper, so a single layer of thin paper looks like it works all right with uh, this rubber sheet on the little MJ Roy. Well, let's see if we can do the same thing, this test with the 32 pound laser paper, shall we? That I actually like it on this heavier paper. It actually becomes a usable typewriter all of a sudden. Well, I thought this was an interesting comparison between several different typewriters here and using this 1 64th of an inch thick Buna rubber protective or backing sheet. It really does look like it works uh, to various effects based on which typewriter you're using, but it certainly made the MJ Roy a more usable typewriter. The imprint is pretty adequate, especially with the thicker 32 pound laser paper. I thought it was pretty good. Um, Royal Mercury, not quite so much, uh, maybe because its platen is so much harder than these other two machines I was testing on. So it's going to require some experimentation if you want to use this, but I think it's certainly an inexpensive enough solution to try in case you want to uh, try to make your hard platen typewriter a little bit more usable before you go to the trouble of removing the platen entirely and shipping it off and getting it recovered in fresh rubber. And actually, in all fairness to the Royal Mercury, um, it did give it a darker imprint and it certainly was quieter in operation. All three machines had a distinctively quieter sound using it. So uh, the only problem really with the Royal Mercury is the lowercase letters have a slight amount of ink shading inside the loops and less so apparently using two layers of thin paper than uh, with a single layer. But uh, I think even just for making the platen quieter, this is a good strategy to try. There you go, something to play with in this winter season when you might be stuck at home with uh, waiting for snowstorms to pass or whatever. So uh, drop a note down below. Would you I'd like to talk to you about this? Do you guys have any other kinds of backing materials that you like to try on your typewriters? I know some people have used construction paper, you know, the heavy craft paper that kids like to use in school. Uh, I've done that. I've done the polyethylene plastic film, as I mentioned earlier on the Roy, but I really think for my use, or at least the things I've compared, I like this Buna rubber, this 1 64th inch thick. It looks like it works pretty good. Well, guys, I wish you the very best this season. Stay creative, stay well, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.